And in lesson six, the final lesson in this pack, we're going to look at the last of our goodness of fit tests, which is goodness of fit, of fit applied to something called contingency tables. So contingency tables are uh, two-way tables that enable us to consider the frequencies with which two criteria are fulfilled at the same time. So in our example, um, we've got criterion one and criterion two, and um, we've got our observed values uh, recorded in our two-way contingency table. So 18 students at school X, uh, got a grade A pass. Okay, so school X, grade A pass, 18 students. Uh, 32 students at school Y, got a C pass. So school Y, got a C. Um, so contingency table enables, enables us to record um, results for where two criteria are being considered. This is known as a two by three contingency table because there are two rows and three columns. Our null and alternative are a similar idea to before. Um, I, are there, is there a significant difference between the observed and the expected? But what we are emphasizing with contingency tables is whether there is independence between our two criteria. So in this case, whether the school and grade are independent um, or whether the school and grade are not independent. So we work out expected frequencies based on the assumption of independence. And if the expected and the observes vary significantly, then that will uh, support not independence. And if they uh, do match up well, then that will support independence. So the expected frequency is calculated on the assumption that the criteria are independent. So assuming independence, the proportion of, and therefore the number of students we'd expect to be in this first criteria, uh, school X and an A grade would be 50 times 44 divided by 120. For a B grade, it's going to be 50, that 50 times 24, that 24 divided by 120. So we're using the totals in each criteria um, to work out the proportion that we'd expect to, uh, to be in each. So it's row total times row column all over grand total is the formula that we need to use for uh, the expected in each case. So in this example, our degrees of freedom is equal to 2 minus 1 times 3 minus 1, so 2 degrees of freedom. 5% uh, significance level, so um, there's our critical value from tables or calculator. Same um, as before, same tables and or same use of calculator to get the critical value for chi-squared. Um, and we've now got our observed and are expected for our contingency table and therefore the rest of the hypotheses test plays out as before. Uh, we work out our goodness of fit statistic and we compare it, uh, sorry, our goodness of fit statistic here uh, and we compare it to our uh, critical region. So because our goodness of fit stat 0.9165 um, is less than our critical region, then we cannot reject H0 and the school grade paths are said to be supported or the hypothesis supports independence of school and grade.